I'm going to invite at this time Miss Sandra Latibodier, and she's a lecturer in the Department of Sociology, Psychology, and Social Work. Pro and she is also the program coordinator of Alzheimer's Jamaica. So just a bit of background on Ms. Latibodier. She holds a Bachelor in Business Administration from the University of Technology in Jamaica, as well as a Master of Social Work degree from the University of the West Indies, Mono. She's an a MPhil PhD candidate in Aging Studies. She is a lecturer and the head of section of the social work department and she's also she has research interests and practice practice work in aging dementia care disability and gender she's a board member of alzheimer's jamaica where she provides public awareness and programs coordination responsibilities which is an unpaid position and so during her volunteer work with alzheimer's jamaica she established a memory club in St. Mary, which is a safe space for persons living with dementia and their caregivers to learn new skills and to share their coping experience. I'm sure there are many of us on this webinar this morning who are particularly interested in that kind of um, support group for persons with dementia. She has planned, organized, and delivered presentations, as well as written numerous articles that have been published in peer-reviewed journals, as well as newspapers. And her PhD thesis is focused on exploring how dementia caregivers and families perceive the caregiving experiences of taking care of an older adult with dementia. Ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Sandra Latibodeo. So good morning again, friends, panelists, colleagues, students, welcome. So this morning, um, I will be looking at grief and loss, the experiences of family caregivers caring for a loved one with dementia. So this is a conversation about the multifaceted nature of dementia caregivers' grief and loss. So, no, no, no. So grief involves intense feelings of sadness or distress, especially in response to a significant loss. It is very personal and can affect people in many different ways. We often think of grief in relation to death, but there's another grief that comes when someone is still living, as in a dementia diagnosis. It is common for family caregivers to have feelings of grief and loss as their life and the life of their loved one is changed by dementia diagnosis. But what is dementia? Dementia is an umbrella term for disorders resulting from disease or trauma to the brain that lead to memory loss, personality and behavior change, and impaired intellectual functions. These changes are not part of normal aging and are severe enough to impact daily living, independence and relationships. Dementia is one of the major causes of disability and, de and dependence among older adults. Currently, there is no cure for the disease. So these are the four quadrants that I just mentioned that it leads to, um, you know, it, it affects your, your cognition, so your memory, your judgment, um, visuospatial, your language, some persons don't know, remember how to speak, it affects your neuropsychotics, it affects your mood, so some persons will have um, depression, psychosis, hallucination, it affects your ability to function, to take care of your activities of daily living and instrumental activities of daily living, it also affects your behavior. There are many types of dementia, um, many persons know about Alzheimer's, there's also vascular, Lewy body and frontal temporal. So quickly, I just want to share with you some facts about dementia based on a, on a study by uh, Professor Elimai Shiro, a 2015 dementia study on Jamaica. Um, and the, the study found that there's a 6% prevalence, 3.9% for those in the 60 to 69 age group, 10.3% for those 70 to 79, and 30.9% for those over 80 years. 
females are more susceptible. The study found 14% female, 7.9% males um, with dementia. Alzheimer's account for 62% and vascular dementia, 32.5%. Vascular dementia was, however, prevalent in 50% of the dementia cases, in the Alzheimer's cases, sorry, mixed dementia. So for us in Jamaica, um, what this study is saying is that vascular dementia is more pre is, is high. There's a high prevalence of vascular dementia in Jamaica. Um, the, the, in the, the, the research, um, there was an estimated 19,000 persons with dementia in 2010, with an increase to 31,000 um, 31, in 2030 and 55,000 in 2050. However, in 2015, we found that there were over 41,000 cases of dementia. And these are just the stats. So you, you, you see, you can see that the increase, the, um, dementia increases with age, though it's not a normal part of aging, um, age is a risk factor. Females are more, are, are more susceptible, although there are some research that tells us that males, so females more susceptible in this study. And um, the, the, the types of the, the patterns of vascular, the, the patterns of dementia in Jamaica. So dementia is described in stages. So you have early or mid, moderate, uh, middle, late and severe. Um, so in the early stages, you will have short-term memory, lo memory loss, subtle personality changes, some confusion, misplacing things. In the early stages, in the early um, stage, which is a mild, most often um, persons with the, with the disease can hide it. So oftentimes when persons are actually diagnosed is when they're in their mid to late, where the um, functionality is their ability to function in certain and, and to do certain activities are more pronounced. So in the middle stages, you'll see need assistance with daily tasks, inability to remember most recent events, asking questions over and over. And in the severe stage now, you have incontinence where persons are almost comatose um, and they can't control their bowel movements. They're unable to recognize their family members, inability to swallow. Um, you know, some, some, some persons do not remember how to swallow in the in the late stages, and so sometimes you will have um, you know person with the disease having a lot of saliva building up in their mouth because they don't remember how to swallow. Same with food, you're feeding them and they don't remember how to swallow. So the 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 long goodbye feelings of grief and loss are frequent companions of, for family members of persons with, with dementia, based on you know the stages that we just talked about. Um, but who are these who are these caregivers? And the, the literature tells us that they are two types. The um, formal, um, which are those that are in the nursing homes. So like Matron will talk a little bit about that. And then you have your informal caregivers. Those are the family caregivers. Those are usually your unpaid, um, maybe your spouse, partner, family member, friend, or, or, or neighbor. And the family, family caregivers are those that are usually um, unpaid, and they normally take care of the person um, with the disease, either in the person's own home or in the caregiver's home. The typical caregivers are your spouse, wife or husband, or adult child or children. The atypical um, caregivers are your in-laws, grandparents, great-grandchildren, nieces and nephews. And there is a, probably another time we'll talk about um, all of those dynamics that surround the, um, the, 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 the atypical caregivers. So grief is personal to each individual and adjustments required by family members is significant and will impact family members emotionally, mentally, and physically and spiritually. And there are certain factors that will also affect the, the, um, the, the expressions of grief. The individual relationship, that dyad, the caregiver and the care recipient relationship. Spouse versus adult child, if there's an imperfect relationship, the atypical caregivers, the in-laws, niece, nephew, grandchildren, as opposed to the, 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 the typical that I talked about, but I'll, I'll, I'll share a little bit of, uh, um, about, what I'm, uh, about this in a little while. The grief is also expressed by the amount of contact that the caregiver has with the care recipient. Does the care recipient live with, with the caregiver um, or does the caregiver live with the care recipient? The degree of dementia, the care recipient is a shadow of how you remembered him or her. So depending on the stage that the person is at, the expressions of grief will vary. So I, I want to talk a little bit about the individual relationship, the caregiver, care recipient um, relationship. So the caregiver is an adult child or a spouse. And in this situation, um, I have found wherever the caregiver is a spouse or adult child of the care recipient, I've observed in my work with families when the spouse or adult child 
starts to assume more and more responsibility, the care recipient experiences some mixed feelings of guilt and anger. This tends to occur in the early to middle stages. The care recipient will, of, will often express his guilt and anger in outbursts of rage. This has to do with the fact that the roles are being reversed and the care recipient as a person with a dementia simply cannot remember why this person is taking over their territory or responsibility. And I know many of you are, are identifying with this. He or she feels that their authority is being threatened, but it's important for families to know that the loss of cognition must not be confused with loss of emotion and positionality. You, they will always remember how you made them feel. So feelings don't leave, even though the memory is no longer there. So even as a care recipient cannot remember, his or her feelings are not turned off. And so the care recipient may feel that something is wrong with what is taking place and is usually expressing aggressive behaviors. Where the caregiver is an adult, where the caregiver is an adult child. Um, so if the adult child is a, is, 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 is a young child um, on the brink of their own career, um, you know, moving on to, to building families and so on, um, I have found that studies where caregivers are, are young, they tend to feel isolated. So I've been doing some work with Claire, and remember, name change to protect identity. Claire is 37. She's a professional, the youngest of three siblings. Claire, Claire is taking care of her mother with dementia. When I met her, she was emotionally fragile, and most of our clients are still fragile. They can't talk about the situation at all. Claire recounts, my friend and I do not hang out anymore. We no longer have anything in common. They do not visit. They are living their lives. Migrated. Some have migrated. Some are married, have children, promoted at work. Well, I have no life, no children, and many health issues. I love my mom, and, have, and I have no problem taking care of her. I would never consider putting my, my mom in a nursing home, the dutiful daughter. So feelings of isolation faced by young caregivers may be doing part of the fact that their peers are involved in raising young families or are not yet facing the caregiving role and do not want to be confronted with the painful existence associated with caring for somebody with the disease. Where the, where the, where, where the relationship between the, the family caregiver and the care recipient is an imperfect one, marred by tension, as in the case of Precious. Precious is 48 years old, divorced with one adult child. She has five siblings, three brothers and two sisters. She's the youngest, but she's a primary caregiver. Um, Claire, um, Precious and her mother has a, had a strained relationship with, with, with STEM in, early, in the early years. Um, now that her mother has, has dementia, Claire is a primary caregiver, but the, our mother will not eat from her. So mom will not eat the food I prepare for her. My daughter, her granddaughter, has to feed her or one of her other children. Otherwise, she will not eat anything. So these are just a, a, a few, a snippet of the multifaceted nature of family caregiving. So it's complex and it, it, it is very uh, multi, multifaceted. So in the literature now, so, make, so what, what I want person to understand, you're not alone in this. There is writings about all of those feelings that you're having. So these are some types of grief that family caregivers may experience following a diagnosis of dementia. Um, Rando talks about anticipatory grief. Um, this is where caregivers experience grief for losses that they anticipate will occur in the future. For example, the one that most care caregivers dread is, the, is that the loved one will no longer recognize them. So many caregivers die a thousand deaths. Husband um, visiting wife, wife asking, who are you? Um, children visiting parents and parents asking, where is Mary? And Mary is the person in front of them. Many caregivers die a thousand deaths. That is the anticipatory grief. Another example is where caregivers start to think of their loved one as already gone or imagining life without the person. Caregivers may experience feelings of guilt or shame or disloyal for feeling this way or thinking this way. Boss um, talks about um, uh, ambiguous grief. Um, boss, um, um, for, for, for boss, he describes it in two forms. The first is leaving without saying goodbye, where the person is psychologically present, although he or she is physically absent. And this happens when you have family members who wander off um, and you can't find them. So again, they are, they, they, they are physically um, absent, but they are psychologically there. Um, the famous case is a 70-year-old Jean Watt who wandered off and she has been missing from May 23, 2020. I can just only imagine the grief that the families are going through. So that is the leaving without saying goodbye. Um, Boss also identifies um, where, the, where the, the, the person with dementia is physically present but psychologically absent, or as Boss calls it, the goodbye without leaving, where the care recipient is that shadow of, of who you remember the person to be. 
um, the, the familiar caregiver alliance talks about renewed grief, which is, a, which is expressed as amb ambiguous grief. And it's experienced when someone with dementia has moments of lucidity. And I know many of you know this. When he or she makes sense for a short while, so family members tend to think that if they can do this once in a while, they ought to be able to do it all the time. And I've had cases where family members will say, why is a person, the person's playing a trick on me? Because they remember sometimes that means they're, they're improving, they're getting better. So caregivers get excited and believe nothing is wrong with the family member. Some people go as far, some caregivers go as far as to say that the family, that the, the, the family member is lying, especially when the care recipient returns to his or her confused state. Caregivers at this point will experience anger, frustration, and disappointment renewed grief. And the final um, grief that I'm going to um, um, discuss with you is disenfranchised grief. Doka talks about that. Ambiguous grief is compounded when the caregiver feels as if um, she's doing it alone. Typically, the burden of care usually falls on one person, either the spouse or one adult child. And the others who are not involved do not validate or acknowledge the losses that the, the, this person is experiencing. The situation is called disenfranchised grief. Caregivers who experience disenfranchised grief are often angry, isolated, and helpless. So these are some of the, 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 the um, expressions of grief that family members are feeling. They're feeling shock, denial, anger, bargaining, depression, acceptance, suspic suspicion, guilt, resentment, frustration, love, and all of this is happening simultaneously. But what are family members um, mourning? What are they mourning? So depending on the relationship with the care recipient and their own circumstances, family members, caregivers are mourning the loss of relationship, loss of intimacy, loss of companionship, loss of future plans, loss of own identity, loss of freedom to work or take part in activities, loss of long-standing long standing roles at the role reversal, as I mentioned earlier, and loss opportunities. So, Again, just want to bring you back that the complexity of dementia care. So when we as caregivers and when we as professionals, myself as a social worker, um, you know, working with family members, I have to remind myself and I have to remind the, the, the family members as well who are taking care of the family um, with dementia that the relationship is paradoxical. You know, um, our, uh, the person is physically present but psychologically absent. So caregivers have to explore now, am I married to this person? Is this my wife or is this my husband? Am I the child or am I the parent? So the person is physically um, present, but psychologically absent, you know? Um, so, so, so these are feelings that you're wrestling with. All of these are happening all at once. We want to, to, persons to understand that um, be prepared to experience feeling, feelings of loss more than once. Um, sometimes the, 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 the care recipient will come out of, of the confused state and, 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 and say how much they care about you and how much they love what you're doing for them. And then sometimes they, they're back in it. And so sometimes, you know, the feelings are high, very high, high, very intense feelings that people are having. I also wanted to, 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 to say to you, respite care. So we, we, we encourage um, caregivers to, to, to take, um, you know, take some time away um, to rest, to rejuvenate. However, the literature tells us that um, we have to be careful as social workers. So again, the complexity of this dementia care. Studies show that respite care from the care recipient may not lessen the experience of burden felt by the caregiver. In fact, for some, the research found that direct challenge to the sense of obligation to provide care. So the dutiful daughter, or for better or worse, the marital vows often result in feelings of guilt that they are abandoning their loved one. So any kind of respite care for caregivers was akin to them failing in their obligation to care for their loved one. So we have to be mindful of that. So as social workers and caregivers, it is important that we understand that, that our clients and to understand that there is humility and tremendous strength in asking for help and that reaching out um, provides growth for them as well as for those who respond. We're all beneficiaries. Another um, complexity, again, um, letting go. And I, and I put it in bold there, you are not being selfish. Family members, family caregivers find it extremely hard to contemplate putting their relative in a nursing home. So, but there comes a time when the real, realization hits that you're not coping. And so um, do not feel badly. You are not being selfish. Just think of if you think if you sink under the burden of care, then the whole family will go under. So here are some questions I want you and your family to think about when you're deciding um, whether you're going to keep the, the, care, the, the care recipient in a home um, or put them uh, or in a nursing home. 
ask yourself, so when you have your family meeting, can I provide a safe environment for my relative? What level of care does my loved one need? Does my loved one know where he or she is? Will a change of environment make a difference? What is the cost of in-home care versus a nursing home? Hard questions, what well, questions that families have to sit down and think through, because again, self-care is also very important. So finally now, summarily, what do caregivers need? Caregivers need permission to grieve in their own style, own time, without being fixed or hurried along. Don't tell people to snap out of it. Um, no, no two people experience grief the same way. Caregivers need access to support and honest, accurate information about health grief so that they can seek help if they become stuck or overwhelmed. We have to help um, caregivers to understand that they, to, to use a person-centered care, they have to learn to, to, to leave the person that they knew behind them and make a relationship with the, the person that is there with them. They need acknowledgement and thanks for their great personal sacrifice. They need to know that their feelings of guilt, love, annoyance, anger, resentment is understandable. Some of it within the context of difficult, difficult choices they sometimes have to make due to limited resources and the lack of information about the disease. They need our support, not rebuke or to, make, to, make, to be made to feel badly. So this is my presentation, but I have a few slides that I want to share with you quickly. So the complex of dementia care, I'm, I'm, I'm promoting our journal, the Caribbean Journal of Social Work. Um, there's an article with myself, um, Dundee Ferguson and Wendy McLean Cook, The Complexity of Dementia Care. Um, and my references and my, so um, th this, this is the support service that we have um, established in St. Mary, Tower Isle in St. Mary. Um, COVID kind of put a little slack on it, but we used to meet every Wednesday. Um, from 10 to 12. And we are planning to have more, to establish more um, memory clubs across the island um, to, with the churches. Um, a colleague of, of, of ours, she provides support services. Um, you can leave your, 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 your um, elderly relatives with her. She will take care of, of, of them and you can go and get some talk, you can get talk therapy and so on. So these are just a few of the support services that I wanted to highlight. Thank you, and Alzheimer's Jamaica, our contact information, um, and thank you.